Tommy, you read me? Hey. You're gonna go slow down to the first river crossing just so we get some B-roll of the truck, okay? Yeah, of course. I've had it for about a year and a half. All right, now why'd you buy it? Because uh, they look like they're fun and fast off-road, and I, younger, I wanted a Unimog, and I realized that they were slow. Well, tell me how you found this guy. Um, I've been looking on eBay and uh, the search Craigslist function that searches the whole country for years. They were always too far away or too expensive. Yeah. And uh, I really wanted the van style. And one day saw it in Golden, which is only a half hour away. I went and bought it. Does it feel like a Forerunner, or is it completely different? Oh, it's totally different. Yeah. This thing almost feels like it has legs and will walk over anything, and the Forerunner just and bounces over things and you can't go very fast. I think my car off my feet. A brief history on the Pinsgauer. The Pinsgauer, or Pins as the Brits called it, was developed in 1969 in Graz, Austria, also home of the Mercedes G-Wagon, by Steyr Daimler Puch. It was designed as a replacement for the Haflinger, a light off-road multi-purpose military vehicle. The first generation Pinsgauer, available in a 4x4 or 6x6 configuration, was produced by Steyr Daimler Puch in Graz, Austria for 29 years, from 1971 until 2000, when the company sold production rights to the UK-based BAE Systems. <laughs> so this is a Swiss Army? It's an old Swiss Army radio truck. It's got so basically... It's uh, a chassis where the engine and the suspension are all kind of inside a big metal pipe yeah and then just kind of comes down <laughs> there's a hatch what, what's this hatch about it locks into place and this seat actually you can unscrew it and kind of tilt it forward so you can actually just stand on the deck there the hatch actually comes in really handy when you're on your side too and you put it on your side once. Yeah, once. Yeah, and did you get out the hatch? Yeah, it was really <laughs> handy. <laughs> and talk to me about kind of the off-road worthiness of it. What makes it special? What does it have for off-road? Well, four-wheel drive oriented, you can do everything on the fly. So you can put it into four-wheel drive with this lever, uh, lock the rear differential with this lever, lock the front differential with this lever, and down here, which you can't see, is a little knob that does the high-low. Four, which you can also do on the fly. Uh, well, it has the portal hubs, which give you a lot of clearance, even with normal sized tires. Like those are the same size tires as on my Forerunner. How about power steering, power brakes, any of that good stuff? No, no. no so you don't need it. It's this. <laughs> so when I first got it, if I went out for a long day, my arms would be t sore for days. The engine's under here. You can actually see it a tiny bit under this little thing where you can add oil, and there's the air intake and the carbs under there. It's a straight four, like 2.5 liter air cooled. On the highway, if it's flat, you can maybe go 60 or 65, but it gets super loud. So headlights, a uh, fan, this turns on the auxiliary gas heater. Does it work? Uh, no. <laughs> it did once, maybe. All right, so what's your favorite thing about the Pinsgauer? 
driving it really fast off-road at speeds that kind of astonish people. Yeah, and you're a WRC racer at heart. In total, the company produced over 20,000 first-generation Pinsgauers and sold them to both civilian and military buyers. However, the Pinsgauer was mainly used as a military vehicle in Austria, Switzerland, and the United Kingdom. Its military background is a testament to the Pinsgauer's utilitarian design and off-road capability. The smaller 4x4 version carries 10 passengers and can tow over 11,000 pounds on the road and 4,000 pounds off-road. One of the mo more surprising things about this is just how big it is on the inside, right? It's got a really short wheelbase. I mean, it's probably the size of like a Wrangler four-door. Maybe it's shorter. Yeah, so it has these uh, blackout curtains and then it's got like little desk lamps. What kind of fuel economy are you getting on the highway and then off-roading? If one was just to drive around on the road without going off-road, you can maybe get 16 or 17 miles per gallon. And when you bought this, how much was it? I got it for 13000 Yeah, and but you had to put some work into it, right? Just had to, having it gone over and, and fixing up one of those portal hubs, I put about 7000 into it, so now it's maybe a $20,000 truck. That can go pretty much anywhere. And you said originally you wanted to get a Unimog. Are you still Jones in front of those, or are you, no. a, are you a Pinsgauer guy now? No, they look <laughs> slow and too big. <laughs> How do you take it? It's, you know, it's got that cab forward design where you're sitting kind of over the front wheels, so you're kind of, you know, you're kind of cantilevered forward. How long does it take you to get used to driving that? It's kind of a weird feeling, you know, if you're not used to it. On the road, you get used to it really quick, but off road, if you're like going down into some pit or something, it was really scary because it's you're like, like just face first. Yeah, of course, the downside is that the crash uh, zone is your feet, right? <laughs> This is yours? Yeah, these guys came up from Boulder to see what it does up here. That yeah, looks like a lot of fun. It's pretty fun. You can drive it like a rally car. How much uh, mud is there? This way? Yeah. Not much. Not much? Let me show the camera. So there's the camera. That's the underneath. That's pretty cool. Pinsgauer's payload is 2,200 pounds in the 4x4 version or 3,300 pounds in the 6x6. It has a range of 249 miles with the standard 20 gallon fuel tank or if you upgrade to the optional 33 gallon fuel tank, a range of 435 miles. In total, the Pinsgauer has 13.2 inches of ground clearance when fully loaded with people and equipment. It can forward water crossings up to 27.6 inches deep. It has an approach angle of 38 degrees and a departure angle of 45 degrees. The Pinsgauer is capable of hauling people and equipment basically anywhere they're needed. Have you ever popped a tire? Uh, I'm at Pennsylvania Gulch. I popped a tire, a sidewall, and I totally just... <laughs> and I knew it was bad and I was climbing those rocky steps. Yeah. And so I floored it to get onto level ground so I could change it. We popped the tire on there too. So we did this. I'm never going on that road again. Another thing you learn with the Pinsgauer is to let it drive itself and don't hold the steering wheel very tight or very hard because it can like sometimes go nuts and like break your elbow or something. You know, Land Rover says as slow as possible, as fast as necessary. I think Pinsgauer is- Pinsgauer says, <laughs> hammer down before you tip over. As fast as possible. <laughs> anyway, thank you guys for watching, and thank you very much for giving us this tour and this fun off-road experience with your Pinsgauer. As always, this is Roman saying, check out tfltruck.com for more news, views, and of course, Pinsgauer, Pinsgauer off-road reviews. See you guys next time, ciao. I think you're probably doing more than this thing was designed to do, right? I mean, I think I it's... doubt it. You watch the promotional videos and they're yeah. driving these things over like railroad ties at like 50 miles an hour. And again, maybe you're not doing more than it was designed to do.